What's up everyone? Welcome to the Durbin Compound. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Devin Durbin. Today we are going to mount a TV on the wall. I've probably mounted 50 or so TVs on the wall using various mounts. My favorite mount is the Barkin mount from Menards. Uh, nonetheless, get ready, strap in, because this is one of those projects where you need a lot of patience and it's never going to go your way no matter how many times you've done it. So take it from me. I hope that you find value in today's content. I'm going to try to show you guys everything that I know and just some tips and tricks along the way. Hope you guys enjoy. All right guys, so first things first, we're going to, going to take this TV and we're gonna mount it on the wall behind. So this is right now sitting on a little wet bar uh, kind of uh, wine table. What we're going to do is everybody gets so excited about taking the TV feet off first, but it's crucial that you just leave the TV on the stand while you work on the mount and get everything together. And then once we get the mount on the wall, we can take the stand off and place the TV on the mount. So keep it on the feet. What we're going to do is we're gonna spin it around on our table here so that we can work on the mount here. So I'm gonna bring you guys in close. I'm gonna show you just how to do these screws on each mount so that it is uh, got the right amount of bite into the back of your TV and you're not messing anything up. Okay, we are gonna go ahead and take our mount out of the box here. And I'm gonna show you just how to put this on the back of the TV. So every mount is going to come in a different shape or style and it's going to come with instructions. You can choose to read those instructions or uh, you can go off of my video, but if you have any questions or concerns about the process, well, consult your specific instructions for the mount that you bought. So in essence, what happens here is we have a standard plate like this, and it's going to be about center in the back of the TV. Every TV is going to have different mounting screws and a different pattern here on where it is. That's why it comes with universal hardware. So we'll go ahead and get these universal arms out of the box here. And they all come with these uh, kind of uh, slider looking pad, um, with a nylon lock nut here in the back. And uh, that's basically to attach to our, uh, our plate here. And we're going to fan these out in a manner that uh, will catch all of our screws and hold the TV nice and firm. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's take the uh, camera down to the floor. I'm gonna show you how to put this together and then we'll kind of fit it up on the TV and I'll show you the next important step. Okay, so now that we've built this um, crazy looking contraption, this X contraption that goes on the back of the TV, we can go ahead and get it centered to the point where it's going to catch all of our screws. Now, the crucial part here is that you want to find the best screw for the application. So your, uh, your mount, uh, bracket will come with all kinds of different mounting hardware. You want to pick the size that best fits the TV that you're looking at. So uh, these holes are a little shallow um, and they are, uh, they don't go in too terribly far. So we might need to put a spacer here. So that's literally all that the shortest screw will thread in on this mounting bracket. So I might need to go get different screws for this. Um, actually, for my, my purposes, uh, this kit does not have what I need to put it in the TV correctly. So these are really shallow holes and it only comes with two of these short nuts, so two of these short bolts here. So um, good thing I have another set of, uh, set of TV mount parts. Um, it does come with four of these long ones. So uh, it does have longer screws, but of course these are going to stick out considerably further than uh, what I need. So all of that would basically be uh, needing a spacer. So um, I'm not sure why my 
uh, my autofocus isn't working, sorry. But see this, uh, this bolt is sticking out considerable amount and I'm not going to leave all that for uh, a spacer to make up that distance. Now it does come with uh, four spacers and they're black plastic spacers. And I will use those up here for the top of the mount, but I'm going to get a, another set of screws. If you run into this situation where the screws are too long for your application, don't run them down into your TV with excessive pressure. Imagine that if you break the back of this, uh, this metal piece here, you can damage your TV or damage the mount. So you don't want to over tighten these or strip these out because this is what's holding your TV on the wall. So keep that in mind. If you need to go get longer screws or sh longer or shorter screws, then just take this this screw to the hardware store and get the right size. Don't try to uh, rig it all up. I mean, it is your investment that's hanging on the wall, so do it right the first time. Okay, so now that we have the bracket on the back of the TV, this contraption with the arms, we're going to go ahead and make sure that this is pretty much centered with where we wanna be. Um, you really don't have to worry about it being level right now. Uh, we're going to go over tightening up these bolts later, but we want to go ahead and snug them up, get them close and snug them up so that um, it doesn't flop all over the place. So this is why I keep the TV uh, stand on so that we can work with this while um, you know we're fighting with all of these little things. So we're about halfway there. Let's go ahead and drop our TV out of the way and we're going to put the mount on the wall. So ready for round two. All right, so here is the place that we're going to mount the TV. Um, we need to find a stud. So every home is usually built with wooden framing and you have a stud, which is a two by four running behind your walls every 16 inches on center for the most part, okay? So there are all kinds of different situations where your specific situation might vary. So what we wanna do here is use a stud finder. Now a stud finder is an awesome tool to have in your toolbox. Um, it can save you in a lot of different situations. More than likely, the situation that you're gonna be uh, working with is drywall. So uh, a drywall wall may be easier to find a stud than this wall with all wood. Um, you can even use a magnet to, to find the head of the screw on the wall and you'll have a set of screws that go up and down the wall. So another tip, if, if you need to and you don't have a stud finder, you can find a switch or a, uh, an outlet in the wall and you can determine whether the stud is on the left or right hand side of that outlet or switch. Now you can just take off the cover, I'm gonna show you that right now, and we can identify which side the stud is on. Okay, this is a decent uh, way to find out where the stud is in your wall. You can take off your uh, electrical cover plate here, take your outlet cover plate off, and you can usually look in the left or right side of this box, and you can see where the stud is along the side here. So just looking in through here, I can see that there's a wooden stud to the right of this outlet box. So I know that it is running vertically from my sill plate all the way up past my box and all the way up the wall. So we're gonna base that off of here. So we don't even really need a stud finder for this specific situation. If you don't have any switches nearby, well, or outlets nearby, well, you might have to use a stud finder. You can also find the closest outlet and measure over 16 inches on center to your next one, 16 inches on center to your next one, and you can uh, base that off the room with a little bit of tape measure. So we're gonna take a tape measure here and we're gonna measure to our, our nearest wall this way. And then I'm going to find the center of the stud and we're gonna rise up to where our mount goes and we're gonna measure from the same wall over to our stud, piece of cake. Okay, so we have this beam here that we can measure off of. So that's what I'm going to do in this specific situation. I could use my stud finder, but uh, a good old tape measure will show me exactly where that is. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure down to my outlet here. And it looks to me that 21 and 7 eighths is going to be center of the stud. So somewhere up in here, I'm gonna be at 21 and 7 eighths 
going to get my pin out of my pocket and I'm going to do a rough mark here about where the center of my stud is. So now the next step is to figure out, well, I want my TV to sit at a certain point on the wall. I want the bottom of the TV. You've probably held the TV up with your significant other or someone say, hey, does this look good? Well, then you've marked the wall and you know where you want it to be. But now we have to figure out, hey, the bottom of my TV, we want on this line here in the wood. So now we have to measure up from that line where the mount goes. So we're gonna bring our TV back over and this is why we leave it on the stand. We're going to attach the wall bracket and then measure exactly how far from the bottom of the TV to the wall bracket we are. And then that's where we will mark our hole. All right, so now we're gonna come over here with our mount here and we are going to set our screws up into place to hold this where it would normally sit. Okay, shove our screw here and that will hold our mount to where it would usually sit. Now what we want to do is uh, some mounting instructions do come with the dimensions from the bottom hole to the bottom of the TV, uh, but everything varies, okay? So uh, what we wanna do is just take a measurement with our tape measure and we wanna measure from the bottom of the TV to our first hole. So this is just an eyeball estimate and it looks like this one's gonna be right at five and a quarter. So we've measured from uh, the bottom of the TV to the bottom hole. So now we wanna mark our bottom hole on the wall. So let's go over there and do that. Remember, five and a quarter. All right, so this is where our line's going to be. We're gonna measure up, what was my measurement? Five and a quarter. Okay, five and a quarter is going to basically be on the next seam. Okay, so what did I say it was from the wall? 21 and 7 eighths. Mark 21 and 7 eighths. And right there where my first hole is going to be. So now I will take my mount back off the TV, the actual wall part. The thing you're probably telling yourself at this point in time is, I did not know it was gonna be this involved. So, uh, of course, these things never go as planned. And okay, so I will roll in a little clip here, but you want your uh, uh, drill bit, wow, that was hard to get out. You want your drill bit to be just smaller than your lag bolt so that uh, it basically paves the way for this lag bolt to go in the wall without create an excessive amount of stress outwards, and that will split your two by four or split anything that you're drilling this into. So the drill bit uh, would probably be given in the instructions what size to use, but if you need to know, just line your drill bit up there. You want it just, uh, just showing the threads, get the right size drill bit. All right, let's go ahead and put our first hole in the wall here. Now you wanna drill the almost the entirety of the lag bolt so that you get the best amount of um, depth for this specific anchor. So we're gonna go ahead and put our, uh, our bolt in the bottom of the bracket. So in the case of this kit, these bolts came with a, uh, a lag bolt that had a Phillips screw in there. Um, you can use a Phillips screwdriver um, that might take a little excessive force, but if you don't have a socket set or don't have an impact, that's something that still can get the job done. So what we're going to do is go ahead and run our, our uh, lag bolt in here a little bit here. and then we're going to drive it the rest of the way in the wall. Okay, I've got it snug. And now we can level it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this directly out so that we can level it. So I'm gonna bring you guys in close. I'm gonna use a level uh, on my phone just because a lot of people don't have levels, no big deal. You can use an app on your phone. Here we go. All right, 
So I'm going to measure off this bracket just to show you um, how accurate that is. Uh, of course, going from our wall over to the bracket looks like uh, 20 and 13 sixteenths. And the top comes in, wow, that's pretty darn accurate. That's within a 32nd of an inch. So in a pinch and you don't have a level, that phone app will get you darn close. So I'm... All right, last step of the project. Let's go ahead and pick up our TV. Once again, this is why we left the mount or the uh, TV stand on here so that we could just pick it up. And we bring it up into our mount and we set it down on the grooves. So now that, all right, see we've left our, our mount loose here so that we can now position the TV here. So let's go ahead and put our, our screws in here that keep this on the mount. So now this part of the project, we are going to set our tilt and tighten our bolt and nut down so that the TV doesn't tilt. Just gonna go ahead and tighten this side down. Seriously, seriously, you did not want to focus? Sorry, it was out of focus. But we're gonna go ahead and bring our TV back into back into the wall and these mounts all have adjustment screws on them so that you can um, adjust how easily they turn and move around so um, don't think that it always has to be that stiff to where it is um, and then you can shore up your TV and voila we've mounted the TV on the wall so I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you got some value in the content. It is going to be a pain in the butt. You are going to need to have a little patience for this project, but nonetheless, it's something that you can do with a little bit of know-how, and hopefully this video uh, brought value to you in your life. I hope to see you guys click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you guys are into, and we'll see you guys in the next video.